July 16, 2015 will go down as perhaps one of the darkest moments in Chattanooga's history. Dark because of an Islamic extremist homegrown terror attack by a man we now know was inspired by ISIS propaganda. His actions were so horrific that we have made an editorial decision not to mention his name. Instead, we will refer to him as terrorist, shooter, murderer. Right now, no major problems on our interstates, although if you are... July 16th, 2015 began as a normal, quiet, and ordinary hot summer day in Chattanooga. That is until 10.30 a.m. A lone gunman went on a shooting spree outside a military recruiting center on Lee Highway. 30 to 40 rounds of ammunition were reportedly fired into this military office from a shooter who was bent on causing harm. Seven people were inside. A U.S. Marine was wounded. The heavily armed shooter then led Chattanooga police on a seven-mile car chase to the U.S. Navy Reserve Center on Amnicola Highway, where he drove through security gates and started firing at everyone in his sight as law enforcement from all over the city and county swarmed the military reserve center people from all over the world were learning about what was happening in chattanooga our reports of an active shooter at the naval reserve center in chattanooga tennessee we are covering a late breaking story the united states government says there has been quote an act of domestic terrorism in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're going to go straight back to those live pictures coming to us from Chattanooga in Tennessee, uh, where that uh, shooting has taken place. We were in the car when the information started coming in. Chattanooga Police Chief Fred Fletcher was en route to Nashville with another officer when he got the call. And as soon as we heard that our community members and our police officers had been harmed, we turned directions around and returned to Chattanooga as quickly as we could. And I could probably remember every mile marker of that trip from Nashville to Chattanooga. Local businesses near the reserve center were on lockdown, and tensions were high as police blocked the large stretch of Amnicola Highway. Oh, wait, something's going on right here. If we can turn the camera this way, pan the camera, pan the camera, pan the camera. Look at that. Okay, we've got a situation. We don't know what is going on, but we see that there are officers. One officer has his assault rifle drawn. Rumors started circulating that the shooter was killed by Chattanooga police after he murdered four servicemen inside the reserve center. Hours after the attack, Chattanooga Mayor Andy Burke, along with law enforcement officials, confirmed the bad news. Uh, we do know that we have four individuals um, who were killed. Those four Marines were identified as Carson Holmquist, Thomas Sullivan, Skip Wells, and David Wyatt. Somebody brutally and brazenly attacked members of our, our armed services and that officers of the Chattanooga Police Department and the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office responded immediately and they were able to make sure that no further loss of life happened. It was obvious Chief Fletcher was angry about what happened. I very much was angry. Somebody had attacked my community, had attacked my military, had attacked and hurt my officers. So yeah, I was very angry. And then for the first time, the word terrorism was used to describe the attack. We are conducting this as a, an act of domestic terrorism. The FBI is now in charge of this investigation. No one could have imagined a terror attack in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're just, uh, you know, saddened beyond uh, belief that this could happen here. Now this has obviously been a horrible day for Chattanooga and a tragic day for all of Tennessee. Every police executive expected something like this to happen. Did I expect it to happen in Chattanooga? We prepared for it, but nobody thought a Chattanooga was a target for a terror attack. And it wasn't long before the events that unfolded earlier in the day got the attention of the White House. I just received a briefing from uh, FBI Director Comey as well as my White House team uh, about the tragic shooting that took place in Chattanooga. And while President Obama took time to talk about the servicemen who were killed, he also talked about Chattanooga police officer Dennis Pettigo, who was wounded by the shooter. There are reports of injuries to uh, Chattanooga uh, local law enforcement officials. Uh, Thankfully, as far as we know at this point, uh, they have survived the assault. He was hurt pretty traumatically, um, a rifle round through his leg. And in the early days, many of us wondered um, 
if or when he would come back. Two days later, the death toll raised to five after Navy Petty Officer Randall Smith died from his injuries. Over the next couple of days, tensions within the city grew very high as FBI field agents tracked down leads to people who were associated with the killer, a man who had just been arrested in Chattanooga two months prior for DUI. Now, is there anything illegal in the vehicle? No, sir. For several days, many wondered if the murderer was inspired by ISIS. Are you, con are you guys confirming that this was an ISIS-inspired shooting? No, we're, we're not confirming that. What we are saying is that that is a possibility that we will explore. That possibility was later confirmed to be the case. In the days, weeks, and even months after the attack, the servicemen who died were honored as heroes. Heroes who not only served to keep our nation safe, but also heroes who gave their lives to help fellow servicemen and service women survive an attack that no one saw coming. The July 16th shootings weren't the first terrorist attack against American interest on U.S. soil, and recent terror attacks in places like San Bernardino, California, and even Orlando, Florida, have proven that it wasn't the last. But every time it happens, one thing remains certain. Americans rise up and unite as one. Eric Avignier, News 12 Now.